Hey, what's up, fellas? We're back out here at White Sands, and we're revisiting the ceramic high emissivity coating. We're going to do a quick recap and look at some of the previous testing that we've done. And what we see right here is a stress test being done with a propane burner, a high velocity propane burner that can reach temperatures of about 2,700 degrees Fahrenheit. And this right here just shows how durable this ceramic coating is. But why would we want to do this other than oxidation protection? Why put it on brick? Well, it comes down to a property of materials called emissivity. The higher the emissivity of material has, the more infrared energy it emits inside the furnace. So if we can make the emissivity of our furnace walls higher, they typically run at about 0.4 to 0.6. This right here, what we're looking at is a metal coupon, which shows why we would want to do this in the first place. The top section has been painted with the high emissivity coating. The bottom section there has not been painted. And as you can see in the thermal IR camera, this bottom section is colder in appearance, but yet the coupon is the same temperature. So we're going to imitate or simulate this scenario inside the furnace by bringing the emissivity up from 0.4 to 0.95 using this coating and it's going to give us some significant power increases but first we got to get a baseline so what we did is we ran this test right here and ran the furnace without the high emissivity coating and came up with a temperature on the order of about 2713 degrees Fahrenheit as you can see on the bottom column there in the max section so the next day we had the high emissivity coating in place and wow, was I blown away to see that we reached a max temperature of 2,933 degrees and all we did was put this coating on the furnace wall. Okay, so we melted down our furnace, completely vitrified the walls, melted the whole thing down. But let's look at this from an economic standpoint. We could actually turn the furnace fuel down if we, if we needed it to be 200 degrees less than this. Look at the liquid puddle. A furnace wall in there that massive ele elephant's foot we burn a hole in the bottom of the crucible and we did melt some steel and some route iron which comes in at 2,900 degrees Fahrenheit melting point so the coating stayed on this particular piece of furnace wall but something weird happened okay so we jackhammered that out and we re-poured a new furnace and we're gonna we burned out the metal formwork that was in there um, I don't know if I want to ever do this again or not. It left some stained oxide material on my refractory, and I don't know how fond of that I am. All right, fellas, we got the bug gun ready. I'm getting attacked out here. We got our wash in place. Okay, we're on. Shit. Where's he going? Ooh, I got him. It knocked him down. Where'd he go, though? All right, I lost him. I did just kill a massive bee. There he is. Oh, look, his pieces of his wings are actually blowing off. I got to get out of here. There's more coming to get me. Wait. I don't know if I like this mixture. The surface that you see here was black. This is what it does to regular stone. It does turn completely white on regular stone. This is that black iron oxide slag from when I burnt the form off. We have a stainless steel artifact in here that is covered with the coating. Just for grins, I mean, we're just going to see what happens. It's probably going to melt it. We saw a temperature of 2,700 degrees without the coating. So we're hoping to see a temperature on the order of 2,900 degrees in order to call this experiment a success. All right, fellas, so I don't know what's going on with the air pressure, but for some reason, we're only able to get about 100 PSI's today. That could attribute to the temperature, but essentially, I'm trying out a new idea today called the furnace hat. And the purpose of this furnace hat is we have a very large open hole in the furnace that is shooting a beam of infrared IR energy directly out of that hole. And that also happens to be directly above the crucible. Look at that liquid stainless steel in there. Can you see that puddle of liquid metal? We're definitely melting some metal there. 
So we have melted the stainless steel artifact. That's a puddle of stainless steel right there you see fluttering around. And there's a blob of liquid stainless steel on the furnace throat right there also. But essentially today's test was a failure, guys. Um, we burnt the coating off of the walls. It may have just simply melted down the side walls like honey due to the iron oxide. Um, it's not the same as the brick. It's very smooth, glassy, and hard. And we only got a 110 degree temperature increase. This thing is very loud. 109 decibel max right there. That's enough to pretty much give you a headache. The furnace hat is meant to focus that hot IR infrared heat right back down into the top of the crucible. And I'm gonna make a parabolic mirror type shaped one with a very subtle curve that shoots a beam of IR heat right back down into the top of that crucible to heat the top. Because I know we're losing a lot of infrared energy shooting up into space there. So that thing's only getting about 1800 degrees Fahrenheit, which isn't too much, but nonetheless, that's a tremendous amount of wattage beaming back down into the furnace now versus just shooting up out that hole. So I'm kind of uh, upset that today was a failure. The coating did not stick on the furnace walls, guys. Nothing like that first test that you guys seen where we had the meltdown. Man. Finally here. So the stainless steel artifact is unsurvived. I'm gonna go get a stick and try and grind that out of there. Well, I think the coating failed. Things I don't like is this black material that's on here. It's extremely hard stuff. The diamond blade will barely grind it off of there. I think I need to grind all this iron oxide slag stuff off these walls. The paint's not adhering to it as well as it does brick. Here is a sample of that piece we were using for the furnace hat to reflect IR back down into the furnace. And some weird things happened there. This pitting took place. Wherever a piece of metal flew out of the furnace, it deeply pitted this stone. Strange. See here that the coating nonetheless did survive. We're vitrified into glass right here. And the coating is still intact. But yet on the furnace, it's mostly all gone. And I'm attributing a lot of that to I'm attributing a lot of that to this black oxide material. Because I used a steel form in here, and I just burned it out because it got stuck at the bottom, and I didn't want to break the refractory. You can kind of see there's the actual natural somewhat. Here is the stainless steel artifact. It completely sugared into chromium oxide. If you've ever welded stainless steel before, you're familiar with this stuff right here. There's just a little bit that was buried in the sugaring. So this piece of metal essentially proofed the temperature of the furnace by an actual like melting cone type scenario. I don't have any furnace cones or whatever they call those. The so I'm not too fond of that composition either. I think we need to change the composition of the coating. We need to go with an aluminum phosphate. And somebody in the comments mentioned cerium oxide as being better than the zirconium. It may just be a cost thing, but I'm going to find out. So we got some aluminum phosphate on the way. In the meantime, we're going to try the coating that we have made one more time. But, but I'm going to up the zirconium to the 56%. All right, so we're painted up way too thick here. It's probably gonna start spalling off, but I double coated it. I didn't like that black layer still shining through. This composition has far more zirconium in it. So we're looking into that attribute. And we're gonna try this one more time. And if it melts off again, we're just gonna wait till we get the aluminum phosphate binder. It can handle far higher temperatures.